To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So it's been raining for several days now. It's supposed to rain the rest of the week. This is Monday. I think it's supposed to rain until Thursday. It has done nothing but rain this year. It's just crazy. I mean, here we're in the middle of summer. Rain should have stopped. Well, not middle of summer, beginning of summer. Rain should have stopped, but I feel like I'm in a rainforest. I mean, I can't cut the grass. Everything's overgrown. But one thing going for me, clean, fresh well water. Yep, water's still clean after all this rain. As you know, I've been working on my well to make sure that the groundwater wasn't getting into it. It's a very old well. So for those who have been with me for a long time know that I've I think I've resolved that problem. So here's another solid test. We had flash flood warnings not that long ago. And so that's the result of that. So very happy with it. I'm going to come down and talk about chickens for a little bit. I'm not sure I've really explained what we got on our newest batch of chickens. So you know that we've got these buff Orphingtons. And so we've got two roosters, two buff Orphington roosters right here. We got Frenchie. And then we've got three hens, Buff Orphingtons, and they're inside the coop. Right now, everybody's in this transitional phase. The roosters are mature enough. There's a little girl. She was sick for a while, but she seems to be doing a lot better. She's a hen, and she seems like the only one that wants to come out since this, we're having this transition into maturity level. So we got the two roosters who are, are quite clearly uh, mature now, and they're, they're demonstrating their maturity. We got red here. He's got a red zip tie around his leg. And then we got white over here. We got a white zip tie. And red's clearly the dominant chicken here. And then we got Frenchie. Frenchie, we were never sure what he was. We went back and forth on it several times. He's Americana or an Easter egger. It's a long story how that happened. Americanas used to be Americanas and then they became Easter Eggers and then Americana was their own breed. It's just, it's very confusing. Frenchie's famous. Everybody knows Frenchie. It's hard to tell what sex an Americana is. There's no real way of finding out, which I just now learned. The tail feathers don't tell you much. Like here, you can see the tail feathers on this rooster stick up and they're kind of arched. But over there on the hen, they're just kind of dull. They cut right off. So that's easy to tell. Of course, we didn't have a, two different sexes of Americanas to really be able to definitively tell what, what it was. Well, this morning we found out. And before we go any further, I want you to give a thumbs up. And I want you to tell me what you think Frenchie is. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Well, this morning, so this morning we came down here, checked for the eggs. Didn't see any eggs. Well, that tells you something. Frenchie was crowing like a rooster. And the way I know this is because we had the two roosters outside. And white was crowing, red was not. You could see, you know, he was stretching his neck, but there was a chicken inside here crowing. Of course, that has to be Frenchy. Now, Americanas don't usually crow very often. They'll do it sometimes in the morning, but they're actually pretty quiet. Now, I wanted to come over here and tell you what we got over here. These are our little babies, and we got three different age groups in here. And so we tried to separate these guys from the bigger chickens because these, these guys over here, I mean, the roosters are being very abusive to the hens right now because of the, the time of year for them. So putting these little guys over here would be really dangerous. These are New Hampshire's. They're much like Rhode Island Reds. Rhode Island Reds are very popular chickens. They were bred about the same time, early 1800s, I think. These guys just never took off. Now, when you read, they say that New Hampshire's are a very aggressive, mean-spirited chicken. These guys are very tame. I love these chickens. But when you come over here and you look at these Buff Orphingtons, everybody says Buff Orphingtons actually make a good pet. Now, little girl, she does all right. She makes a good pet. See, I can pet her. But that's because we, she was sick and I had to spend so much time with her. But these guys are just hard to be around. They don't, they want, don't want to be touched. As a matter of fact, the rooster, the white, got me yesterday. But you can come over here. These guys here aren't afraid of us at all. There's one out of the th four that doesn't like me too much. But instead of getting aggressive, she just runs away. Now, these are all supposed to be females here. 
So, and then we have more Americanas. Americanas, the reason we got a bunch of Americanas is they give different colored eggs. They still give out the same number of eggs as Buff Orpingtons and New Hampshire's, but they're different colors. So if we ever decide that we want to sell eggs, these we can actually sell for a higher price than the regular eggs. I suspect what we'll do is if we ever have to sell eggs, we'll sell all the other eggs for $2 and colored eggs for $3. And you can get different colors out of them. We don't know what you're going to get, of course. But you can get browns and greens and blues. I think you can get pinks out of them, different colors. But we'll see. So we got a whole bunch of different color Americanas. Now Americana is the same breed as Frenchie, who's coming out of the coop right now. Now Frenchie was just by an accident. He was in a mixed breed of chickens that we picked up. I think we picked up like five mixed breed chickens. And out of those five, he was the only one that survived. As you can tell, the New Hampshire's are quite a bit older than the Americanas. So we have, I don't know how old they are. Let's say the New Hampshire's are 12 weeks old and and then we have eight week old and then we have like six week old Americana. So we have three different age groups in here. I'm thinking within the next month or so, the New Hampshire's will be ready to go in with the, the Buff Orphingtons over here. Oh, I forgot to mention the Americanas do not like to be touched. Now Frenchie, he's okay with it, but these guys, they don't like it at all. Look at it, just very upset. Here's my concern about these guys. The person who sold them to us sexed them by lifting up their wing and saying, okay, this is a female, this is a female, this is a female. Apparently that's not true. So I'm a little bit concerned that we may not have all females, which is okay. We'll butcher them and eat them when they get big enough. But I was really hoping for a lot of females. And if we don't get a lot of females, what we have now is we have Frenchie, who is a male. So Frenchie will breed with the females and we might be able to get more Americanas next spring. Here's what's interesting is the Americanas, the ones with the colored eggs, are not very broody, meaning they don't make very good mothers. However, female Buff Orpingtons make very good mothers and they're very broody. So what we can do is if Frenchie and the Americanas have offspring eggs, what I'll do is I'll give the, the colored eggs to one of the broody Buff Orpingtons, and she will raise the Americanas. The problem is, is when a chicken becomes broody, she stops giving out eggs for, until the chickens are old enough to take care of themselves. So what we'll do is we'll let the chicken, probably a little girl, because she seems to be very friendly. There's another hen right there. She'll raise them, uh, you know, a couple weeks old, and then we can take the chickens, put them in the camper, let them raise themselves. Then we don't have to worry about temperatures and keeping everything warm because she'll take care of them. It's a win-win no matter what, having the Buff Orpingtons and the Americanas. So as I've been telling you, as soon as it stops raining, I'm gonna build a, another chicken coop out of this Coroplast. Hopefully Friday or this weekend, I can start working on that. I've got a, another tent, like you saw, for a chicken run coming. It's already been shipped. Thursday, we're gonna pick up some more fence wire and then we'll put meat chickens in it. So yesterday I ordered meat chickens, 25 of them, what they are called Cornish cross. I always put the word hens behind them. I don't know why Cornish cross hens, but they also come in roosters, so it doesn't really matter. They're not sexed, so we'll just get whatever. So we're gonna go down and get those on Thursday. It was gonna cost an extra $26 to have them delivered. And we didn't wanna spend the extra $26 because we're trying to reduce the cost on chicken meat which I've explained many times that we can probably raise these chickens after purchase price, which is $2 a piece and food cost, probably anywhere from six to $8 a piece. Well, if you go buy a Tyson full chicken right now, eight pounds, it's $14 at Save-A-Lot, which is like a discount store for food. So we'll get 10 pounds from the Cornish Cross ends. So we'll be able to butcher those in about 10 weeks. You can butcher them as early as six weeks, but we're gonna wait until 10 weeks because that still comes under the price of a Tyson chicken. So you're gonna give them about 22% protein in their feed, and that will increase their growth rate. Now, if you don't wanna grow Cornish cross hens fast, then you just give them regular feed. Bread for, for as a meat chicken. I have seen videos where people actually have Cornish cross hens as pets, and they will live a couple years. They don't live very long. Now, if you feed them protein, 
and you put them in stressful environments, they may not last more than 20 weeks old. Uh, they're a very weak breed. They're not very durable in the winter. So you want to get them butchered before the winter, but they're also not very durable in the summer. They don't like the heat. However, if you raise them now, if you get them right now as babies, babies require that you be around 100 degrees, 90 to 100 degrees. So you buy them in July, you raise them until September, and then you don't have to worry about it because in July, temperatures are real hot when they need the heat. Then it starts to cool down right about the time you start butchering them. However, we're gonna have enough chickens over here that we should be able to butcher these guys. The problem is these guys will cost more to raise. So let's think about this. We're gonna buy a chicken here for $2 and spend another four to $6 raising the Cornish crossings. These guys though, we won't have the purchase price. So we'll get to subtract the $2 because we're gonna breed them on our own. So even if we spend a full $8 raising them, we still come at the same price as the Cornish cross hens. The downside is these guys don't get quite as big as the Cornish cross hens. So I hope I can inspire you to look at alternatives for your food source when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.